Have you ever done joins in Tableau and found that you ended up with all these duplicates that came from seemingly nowhere? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to address that problem. So let's go. Here we are back for another video. And this question comes from Imran Sheikh. And the question is, uh, take your time, Jeff. I think we were kind of going back and forth. Also, this is like a month ago uh, with the question. So Imran, sorry it took me so long. I took like a, a one month break from YouTube. So I didn't do anything YouTube because I just needed a break. It was um, after, you know, hundreds of videos, you need a break. Um, and I had a request for you to explain the scenario why we get duplicate records when we join multiple tables, specifically on date field as joining condition and how to overcome this challenge. All right. So the whole creation of duplicates, it's not a mistake. It is a property of joins. OK, so I'm going to go through a little bit of theory. And we're going to go into Tableau and we're going to come back to Excel and I'll show you physically what it's doing. So I've got two um, data sets here. Okay, so I've got this one and this one, and I've color coded it. So the ones that are yellow are the same. The ones that are blue are the same. And then the rest don't really link to anything, right? And this is kind of where the Venn diagram comes in. And if you don't know what a Venn diagram is, let me see if I can actually draw one. It's basically this thing. Oh, no, circle. It's basically this. So if I take two of these, right, you probably notice this. Okay, and the way the Venn diagram works is you've got a few of them. I'm not going to do all of them, but you think of the left side as your left data set and the right side as your right data set. And depending on how it's been filled in, so let's say I do that, it means give me everything on the left side, even if it doesn't match when I, when I join them. So that refers to these white ones. All right, let me get my drawing tool, actually. It refers to these white ones. And then anything that matches, right, in that middle section. Actually, maybe I shouldn't have chosen red because my drawing tool is red. Hang on. That's going to be very annoying. So let me just edit that. Maybe we'll make it blue. Okay, there we go. All right, so back to drawing tool. So if I do a join, anything that doesn't match to the right side is this space here. And that's these ones. And then anything that's in here, which means it's common in both, gets included. So that's these two right here. But if I did something like this, for example, that means my final result will only give me anything that's common. So the yellows and blues. Uh, if I do just this, it goes give me everything on the left side that didn't match to anything on the right. And then obviously, if you reverse the whole thing, you go this way, it means give me everything on the right side, but nothing that matches. And then here, give me everything on the right side plus everything that matches. So that's kind of how you read a Venn diagram. Um, that's the theory. If you didn't understand, that's okay. We're going to do an example. So let's now go into Tableau. So if I join these, how many rows of data should I get at the end? Right? Is the answer, whatever this is, what? Uh, seven. Well, then I'm going to tell you it's not. So let's actually do it. So here we are in Tableau. And actually, I haven't even saved this yet. So let me just save this. Let's call Let's put it in downloads. Let's call it a left, right, join tutorial. All right. Um, by the way, I'll make this data set available in the description. So if you want to follow along, it is there. Okay, let's go to my downloads, I'm going to bring it over. So we're going to, so to do the join, we need to bring both of them in. So I'm going to start with the left side. Here we go. So that's our data set there. And I'm going to bring the right. Now, one of the mistakes you could make as to why some of the behavior is weird is that I think last year, Tableau uh, changed the default joining mechanism you can say so that when you do this and i bring the right one and see this curly kind of thing that's a blend that's not a join so don't do that don't do this okay that's a blend we're not doing blends blends have completely different behavior what you want to do is you want to go in here you want to go open and it brings you into this section and then you can do your join so you should see this venn diagram the one i drew before okay you can see it is right there Right? And you get to choose which kind of Venn, uh, kind of setup you want. The one we want is, let's do a inner. That means it's only going to give me the stuff inside. So if I go inner, and I say left date and right date, so whatever is common, what you'll notice is I have now have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 records. But in my Excel spreadsheet, I only have 7 right on each side. So where did this 10 come from? Okay, so if you go in here, what you'll notice is this one. So we're only looking at things that are common. These are all 
uh, 1st of August. And there's nine of them. So where did the nine come from? If I go back to uh, Excel, it came from this. Whenever you do joins, it's trying to match up as many combinations as possible. So looking at this first one, it's going, how many in the other side has 1st of August? So it's one, two, three. So that's three output, right? And then it does the second one. Let me change colors here. It goes to the next one. All right, how many does this connect to? One, two, three. That's another three. So now you're up to six. Uh, what's the next color? Pur uh, purplish. And then it does the third one. One, two, three. So that's nine. So it, it duplicates itself based on how many, the maximum number of connections it can make. So it's a very easy formula, actually, um, that you can scale up. So let's say you have, you know, 1st of August, a hundred times in this side. Oops, hang on. And then here you had it. Let's make it even weirder. Let's make it 88 times on this side, as in you have 88 first of Augusts. And then on this side, you had 56 first of Augusts. You simply multiply them together. Where my calculator at? It's too early to do math. Um, so 88 times 56. That's how many rows of duplicates you'll generate. So you can actually predict ahead of time what should happen. So as you design and develop things, you should have a very um, clear understanding of your validation sequence, your quality testing. And what I typically do is I'll assess a data set to begin with. So here I'll be like, all right, how many duplicates are in here? Zero or however many. And then I, I look at how many duplicates are on the right side. And then I'll do a basic like hand calc and say there should either be zero duplicates or there should be 50. So then when I do my actual visualizations, I can test the output and be like, yes, there were 50 or yes, there were zero. And then you know nothing funny happened or nothing unintended happened. Okay, so now if I change the um, connections, let's do something else. What if I wanted to bring in these three? Okay, these ones that are not colored. Well, I simply change this Venn diagram into this one left. So you can see here, these three, 12th, 8th, and the 25th are now included. Let me put that side by side, All right? Uh, 12th of August there, 8th of August, and 25th of September. And you'll see that on the right side, it's null because it does not exist in this side. If you do the exact opposite, which is the right side, watch what happens this time. Okay, maybe I'll get rid of a few rows. Okay, all right, let's minimize this. Why is that not minimizing? Here we go. So here you have 15th of July, doesn't exist on the left side. And then you also have 13th of December, doesn't exist on the left side. So that's how you would do it. Um, I know when you're learning joins at the beginning, it can be a little bit confusing. And sometimes when you go, oh, I think I get it, and you start working on bigger projects, and it doesn't go right. What I recommend, and I still teach to this day, and I, you know, advise a lot of other people when they do stuff professionally, is don't start with the super complicated stuff. You want to start with, like, basic concepts and build them up, right? You want to test structures. So what do I mean by that? Like, you could have a massive data set with dates. Like, you could have, like, a million and a million right? What I would do is like, if you're just testing the design, just take a few samples, write the code, make sure the code flows, do your little tests, and then slowly add more and more data. It's very rare and it's very dangerous as well to design the whole thing at once because there's no way to validate it and test it and ensure that the quality is there. There is, but it's extremely difficult, right? And you end up wasting a lot of time. So we'll leave it there. Um, if you want to learn a lot more about joins and stuff, I have heaps of courses. So like there's um, my Udemy course in the description below. So if you want to check that out, um, it's free. Uh, the first section is free. And then if you want to learn more, obviously you can pay and uh, learn a lot more. But let's leave it there. Hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you next time. By the way, did you see the hat?